Good afternoon, everyone. Today is uh, first day, fourth special session. Today is Thursday, May 26, 2022, at uh, 1.50 p.m. here in the uh, Senate Chamber in Capitol Hill, Saipan. The moment of silent prayer. Um, this time, no, we recognize Paul C. Clerk, but Agani Roko. Senator Cruz. Here. Senator De Leon Guerrero. Here. Senator Hoko. Okay, yeah. Mr. President. Yeah, yeah. Senator King Neighbors. Present. Senator Maglonia. Here. Senator Kirigua. Senator Sablan. Okay, yeah. Senator Santos. Mr. President, all nine members are present. We have nine members present. We have a quorum to conduct this uh, session. And uh, let the record reflect that uh, Senator Manglonia is appearing before us, joining us via Zoom. Is that correct? Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so moving on under uh, item B, public comment. Uh, this is the portion of our session where we allow members of the general public to offer uh, comments on items before today's uh, session on the order of business. Okay, none. Let the record reflect that uh, no one provided uh, public comment. Moving to item C, uh, reading and approval of the journal. Uh, recognize the floor leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Under item C, reading and approval of the journal, we have two Senate journals. Our first Senate journal is Senate Journal 22-23. First day, first special session dated April 18, 2022. Mr. President and members, I move for its adoption. There's been a motion offered by uh, the floor leader for the adoption of Senate Journal 22-23, and it's been seconded. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion for the adoption of uh, Senate Journal 2223, please say aye. All those opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Senate Journal 2223. It's adopted. Floor leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Our last journal for today is Senate Journal 22-24. First day, second special session, dated April 22, 2022. Mr. President and members, I move for its adoption. So a motion for adoption of uh, Senate Journal 2224, and that's been seconded. Uh, discussion? All those in favor of the motion for the adoption of Senate Journal 2224, please say aye. All those opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Senate Journal 2224, see by adopted. And before I uh, we go down uh, to the next item, I the chair would like to... Uh, refer to item M for which to entertain the standing committee report that is before us primarily on the, from the committee on executive appointments and government investigations so with that um I recognize the floor leader <clears throat> to offer a motion, uh, beginning with uh, 
uh, item two. And at this time, I would like to I request the sergeant at arms to please uh, uh, escort the appointee to the chair. Thank you. Floor leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President and members, we have several standing committee reports for this body's action today. And our first standing committee report is standing committee report number 22-71 from your committee on executive appointments and government investigations reporting on the executive appointment of Mr. Jesus S. Cepeda to serve as a member of the Commonwealth Election Commission representing the third senatorial district. Mr. President and members, I move for its adoption. There's been a motion for adopt to uh, offer by the floor leader to adopt standing committee report uh, 2271 as reported by the floor leader and has been seconded. Under discussion, I recognize uh, the chairman for the EAGI, Senator Francisco Q. Cruz. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Mr. President, this is the Standing Committee Report number 22.71. <clears throat> and this is the uh, appointment of Mr. Jesus S. Cepeda to serve as a member of the Commonwealth Election Commission representing the 3rd Senatorial District, Saipan. Mr. President, your committee on executive appointments and government investigation to which was referred the appointment of Mr. Jesus S. Cepeda to serve as a member of the Commonwealth Election Commission representing the third senatorial district begs to leave to report as follow. After review and consideration of testimonies provided, your committee recommends the confirmation of Mr. Jesus S. Cepeda's appointment to serve as a member of the Commonwealth Commission, Election Commission representing the third senatorial district. Pursuant to Rule 8, Section 5 of the Official Rules of the Senate, it is the duty and purpose of your committee to report to the Senate for legislative action pertaining to the appointment of Mr. Sus S. Cepeda to serve as a member of the Commonwealth Election Commission representing the 3rd Senatorial District, Saipan. And uh, your committee has examined all pertinent documents relating to the executive appointment of Mr. Cepeda's overall credential to serve as a member of the Commonwealth Election Commission. And in summation of all written and oral testimonies provided to the committee, there are no written testimony in support of the appointee. Three oral testimonies in support of the appointee, of which one hard copy of the testimony stated were submitted on the date of the, of the hearing and no written or oral testimonies in opposition of the appointee. Additionally, your committee stated several recommendations, issues, and concerns to the appointee that are included in this report. And based on the overassessment of Mr. Cepeda's credential, experiences, testimonies, goals for the agency, and other relevant issues considered, your committee is convinced that Mr. Cepeda has the qualification and leadership skills necessary to serve as a member of the Commonwealth Election Commission. The public hearing was conducted on May 23, 2022 at the Senate Chamber here, in, here at the Honorable Sus P. Mofnas Memorial Building, Capitol Hill, Saipan. And during the hearing, cert certain recommendations, issues, and concerns were raised for the appointee to address and look into when confirmed as a member of the Commonwealth Election Commission. Additionally, the appointee was accom accompanied by the executive or the Commonwealth Election Commission Executive Director, Ms. Kela S. Igeto, to provide additional clarification of, the, of, the, of what the committee has addressed. In conclusion, all required documents in conformance with Rule 8, Section 8 of 8, Rules 8, Section 5 of the Official Rules of the Senate have been submitted for your to your committee for review and consideration. And based on the submission of pertinent documents and testimonies, 
Your committee concludes that the appointment of Mr. Sus S. Cepeda to serve as a member of the Commonwealth Election Commission is, un is in accordance with 1 CMC subsection 61 or 2. Therefore, your committee consents the confirmation of Mr. Sus S. Cepeda to serve as a member of the Commonwealth Election Commission to represent the third senatorial district Saipan. Again, I ask the full body of the Senate to support Standing Committee Report number 22-71. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Cruz. Uh, any member would like to offer comments? Recognize Senator Edith DeLonger. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just for a correction on the committee report uh, before I ask a question of the nominee on Section C, Mr. Jesus S. Cepeda slash the O and put a P. Correction on the name, thank you. And my only question, uh, I have to, uh, um, I'm happy to see you, Tsumbai. Sure. We've gone a long way back. Yeah, um, um, Senator, um, if you wish to uh, ask directly to the nominee, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to ask the floor leader to resolve into committee. Thank you. So that we can, do you do have a question to the nominee or? A very short question for the nominee. You know, I would uh, allow that uh, uh, to go go with a request. Uh, go ahead, uh, floor leader. Thank you, Mr. President. And as per the request from Senator De Leon Guerrero, um, if there's no objection from the presiding officer and the members, I'd like to dissolve into the committee as a whole so that the senators may ask the nominee um, questions pertaining to his nomination. Second. Okay, a uh, motion uh, offered by the floor leader to dissolve into the committee of the whole. And it's been seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, say nay. Motion carries. We are now in committee of the whole. And now the floor leader takes over. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, recognize Senator DeLongro for her question. Thank you, floor leader. Um, so welcome, Mr. Cepeda. It's so nice to see you. <laughs> it's been a long time. Uh, my, my question to you, I see that you're still holding down your position with the police department, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And um, I understand that it's going to require much of your time to get acquainted with the election laws and the procedures, basically, be, being a board member. And um, just a little bit concerned of your time being away from your DPS um, priority, a responsibility for the protection of the community versus this particular position that you are taking on as a new responsibility as well. So I guess um, I'm just curious about the balancing of time with respect to community safety versus sitting on a commission board for the election and trying to go assimilate yourself into the process and understanding the laws of the election and many other concerns that are raised by the committee and how, how are you going to handle that? Well, I do believe that every sector or agency have the ways of uh, handling their hours of their employees handling how to take their leave uh, to attend to other necessities. Okay. So I, I am pretty sure I, I will have time. Okay. And, and my only other question, um, I know this has been a, a growing concern of um, NMD registration uh, with the Election Commission, the Northern Marianas Descent registration. Um, I'd like for you to uh, spend some time also looking into that and get that going so that I think it's an interesting data to know exactly how many NMDs are registered through the office and in respect to the population. Um, that's been something that's been ongoing and unto this date, uh, we have yet to really have a true number of how many people are registered. So I'd like to see some effort put into that. Yes, I'll look into it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Leon Guerrero. Any other members um, wish to pose any questions before we rise back? Ready? Mr. President, at this moment, I rise back into plenary session. Thank you, Floor Leader, and thank you, uh, Mr. Zepeda, and thank you, uh, Senator Edith, for uh, those questions.
So we're back into resolve back, no? Into to a session or inner session. And at this time, uh, um, I would like to uh, um, <laughs> to now call the roll and I recognize the clerk to call the roll for the adoption of um, Standing Committee Report uh, 22-71. Clerk. Senator Cruz? Yes. Senator De Leon Guerrero? Yes. Senator Hoco? Yes. Senator King Neighbors? Okay. Senator Maglonia? Yes. Senator Kirigua? Okay. Senator Sablon? Okay. Senator Santos? Mr. President? Yes. Mr. President, all nine members voted yes. With nine members uh, voting yes, standing committee report number 2271 is hereby adopted by the Senate, uh, which means that uh, the appointment of Mr. Jesus Cepeda has been uh, approved to serve at the Commonwealth Election Commission. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Cepeda, you may be excused from the chair. Thank you Thank so you. much Thank for you very being much. here. And then moving on along, I would like to uh, uh, request the floor leader or correction, the sergeant at arms to accompany the, or, or short recess, yeah? Remember Malago.
we're back in session. And before we uh, took that break, uh, we're still on item M. And at this time, the chair recognizes the floor leader to offer the motion for the adoption of um, standing committee report uh, number 22, starting with 2272. Floor leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Our second report is standing committee report number 22-72 from your committee on executive appointments and government investigations reporting on the executive appointment of Mr. Keith Stewart to serve as a member of the Northern Marianas Technical Institute Board of Trustees representing the third senatorial district. Mr. President and members, I move for its adoption. Motion offered by the floor leader to adopt standing committee report number 2272 uh, from the committee on executive appointments and government investigations. And it's been seconded under discussion. The chair recognizes the floor leader. I mean, I'm sorry, the chair recognizes the EAGI chair, Senator Francisco Q. Cruz. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. This is the second uh, standing committee report from your committee on executive appointment and investigation. And this is uh, standing committee report number 22 72. The executive appointment of Mr. Keith S. O.J. Stewart to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Marana's Technical Institute, representing the Third Senator District, Saipan. Mr. President, your committee on executive appointments and investigation, to which was referred the appointment of Mr. Stewart to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Marana's Technical Institute, representing the Third Senatorial District. Back leave to report as follow. After reviewing, after reviewing consideration of testimonies provided, your committee recommends the confirmation of Mr. Stewart's appointment to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Marana's Technical Institute representing the Third Senator District. Pursuant to Rule 8, Section 5 of the Official Rules of the Senate, it is the duty and purpose of your committee to report to the Senate for legislative action pertaining to the appointment of Mr. Keith J. Stewart to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Marana's Technical Institute representing the third senator district. Your committee has examined all pertinent documents relating to the executive appointment of Mr. Stewart's overall credentials to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Marana's Technical Institute. In summation of all written and oral testimonies provided to the committee, there is one written testimony in support of the appointee, three oral testimonies in support of the appointee, of which two hard copy of the, of the testimony sta uh, stated were submitted on the date of the hearing, and no written or oral testimonies in opposition of the appointee. Additionally, your committee stated several recommendations, issues, and concerns to the appointee that are that are included in this report. And based on the overassessment of Mr. Stewart's credential experiences, testimonies, goals for the agency, and other relevant issues considered, your committee is convinced that Mr. Stewart has the qualification and leadership skills necessary to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Marianas Technical Institute. The hearing, the public hearing, was conducted on May 22nd, 2022 at the Senate Chamber of the Honorable Sus P. Mofnes Memorial Building here in Capitol Hill, Saipan. And during the hearing, certain recommendations, issues, and concerns were raised for the appointee, accompanied by appointee Aaron N. Ho and appointee Zhang Q. Tamakani to address and look into when confirmed as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Marana's Technical Institute. In conclusion, all required documents in conformance with Rule 8, Section 5 of the Official Rules of the Senate have been submitted for your committee, to your committee for review and consideration. And based on the submission of pertinent documents and testimonies, your committee concludes that the appointment of Mr. Keith J. Stewart to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Marana's Technical Institute is in accordance with 3 CMCs, subsection 12112. Therefore, your committee consent the confirmation of Mr. Keith J. Stewart 
to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Marans Technical Institute to represent the Third Senator District. Again, I ask the full body of the Senate to support Standing Committee Report Number 22-72. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Senator Cruz. Um, any other member that wish to uh, offer comments uh, with regards to the committee report? Senator De Leon Guerrero. Okay, this is what uh, I'm going to um, to um, because um, there is a committee report on all three separate, no? Um, let me let me call for a short recess, okay? Let me allow me allow me to call for a short recess. We're back in session, and as discussed during break, um, the chair now recognizes the floor leader. Thank you, Mr. President. At this time, I'd like to offer a motion that we dissolve into a committee as a whole so that the members may post um, general questions to the nominees. So move. It's made a motion to, by offered by the floor leader to dissolve into committee of the whole, and it's been seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. All those opposed say nay. Motion carries. We are now in. Thank you, President. The floor and as per Senate rules, um, when the members dissolve into Committee of the Whole, um, the floor leader now holds the floor for uh, to preside over the um, committee as a whole. So at this time, uh, Senator De Leon Guerrero, you now have uh, the floor. And pl uh, please pose your question to um, any of the, the nominees. Thank you, uh, floor leader. So um, any of you. you Whoever is comfortable in answering the question, feel free to respond to it. And so, um, let me let me focus on Mr. Stewart. I was reading um, committee report twenty two seventy three, and there was a question by the committee that was asked about um, certification of heavy equipment operators. And the response here is that um, 
that the um, students, I guess, the trainees, correct, will be um, certified from our safety company. Uh, are you referring to your company? Yes, that was the where I was responding to is as Pacific Rim, we do training with our safety um, to certify them that their safety that they safely are trained for the equipment that they run. Okay, and these are the NMTI students that will be going through your company for their safety training and subsequently their certification for operation of the heavy equipment, correct? So not exactly the 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 discussion at the time was going and and as I recall discussing potentially other op other training that could be provided to um, <clears throat> to individuals here in the CNMI mm -hmm. and um, so as a part of that uh, it was being asked for us to consider um, under NMTI to go in and create training for equipment operators um, which it currently does not exist. And okay. so my, my comment was just responding as a company owner, what do we do? We do our own training internally with our safety company. That's a third party. Okay. I appreciate the clarification. And, and the reason why I raised the question is because um, we don't want any issues with respect to conflicts, especially as a sitting board member, if you're confirmed by this body and that I know that um, there's other federal funds that are, are, are going through NMTI as a recipient or sub-recipient, sub-grantee from the state workforce um, system so that in the future, if, if you, you know, companies should participate in this particular certification and training, and hopefully it's also an apprenticeable certification through the U.S. Department of Labor, working closely with the local Department of Labor, right, that um, any sort of conflict must be addressed just so that nothing is raised um, in terms of suspicious of um, a board member benefiting from the funds that are going through NMTI. Correct. And I brought that up originally within part of my introductory um, last Monday, indicating um, that if by being a board member, um, we cannot hire any, any individuals going through the training, we would respect that and understand that. Uh, we'll, I'll leave that to the legal determination of, of conflicts. Um, but I think you know the reason that I would I agree to consider and be, and be nominated for this position is not for anything that comes back to us as a company or you know we benefit anything. It's solely looking and trying to utilize our resources to go and help with the improvement of right. I'm not here to training, discourage. So. I mean, you know, I, I, I applaud the construction industry for providing that opportunity. I'm just saying that um, if ever should your company be the company, you know, that's necessary to provide that kind of certification for the students, absolutely, as long as the conflicts are addressed, just so that the, your company is protected, the school is protected, and there's no questionable cost. Um, if I may proceed, please. Um, I want to know if NMTI is represented on the state workforce board. Are you aware of the state workforce board? You're not aware? You're not sure. I, I I don't think we are, but uh, we can clarify with uh, the CEO because I uh, was on leave uh, for eleven months, and then when I came back, it was my term uh, expired. So I, from the time I left, I did not hear that we were part of the the board. Okay, uh, so you're not you're not too sure if there's if NMTI is represented on the state workforce investment board. That's that's one concern I have, and 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 as as board of um, nominees, and you're a re re nominee for the, for the uh, board of trustees, for NMTI, you're not too sure what is the state workforce investment board. Is that what I'm sensing from you or gathering no, from uh, you? Let me clarify, uh, Senator. What I I my my reply is that I am not sure if NMTI is represented mm -hmm. in the state for, uh, force. I am not sure of that. I have not heard that in any of the meetings that I attended before. But you are aware that there is a state workforce investment board? I am. Um, Do you know the aware. function of the board? Uh, not 100%. Okay. Okay. You're not 100%. All right. And um, my next question to you as board of trustees, I understand two of you are new. And that's okay. I understand that. Um, maybe the question can be answered by the re-nominee. Considering you have been working with the Board of Trustees for the school, 
I'm sure that you've sat into meetings and talked about financials. Yes. My question to you is, do you know how much money has been um, funneled through the Northern Mariana Straits Institute or under the new name as a public entity? There is, um, we have uh, 750,000 from the CW that um, was, if, if you ask me about before I left 11 months ago, I would have an information, but as I mentioned earlier, um, I came back in February, my term uh, expired in uh, March. So I have not been in communication with NMTI since uh, March 11, March 12th, after my term expired. I haven't gotten any uh, report because I'm not anymore aboard. So my information is from a uh, way long time ago. I mean, before I left 11 months ago. So you left 11 months ago? Yes, Senator. On, on I was board. on leave, but I was uh, on Zoom when they invited me to attend a meeting they sent me the link. And most of the conversations at that time on the meeting were mostly about policy review. Um, we were talking about a Bank of Guam account that we were trying to pursue or to uh, get. And at that time, um, if you remember, NMTI was closed during the COVID and we were not operational for a while. So when we came back, it's like, um, short time and then we uh, worked on getting um, some stuff, the staffing. There were more uh, issues that were addressed. So the financial, although uh, the, our treasurer would give us a report, it was never really like discussed in, in Toro, uh, all the financial. I just know that uh, they gave us financial reports and that there were bank accounts that we need to check. Uh, thank you for your candidness. And um, um, I think a sitting board of trustees is very important to know the standing, uh, financial standing of the institution. Um, that's just a uh, business, right? Um, let's move on to data. Uh, you are the most senior amongst the three. So can you tell me, I understand you left 11 months ago, but um, is there any most recent data of how many students are enrolled in the school and what kind of um, occupations are being focused considering that we're still under the transition program under the CW1 program. And um, you know what, what is the, the data telling with respect to the most in need occupations for the Commonwealth? So Senator, after our hearing last Monday, I actually went back and look at the data, started to look at the data. So right now we have about approximately 70 students enrolled and uh, the, the programs are mostly related to construction, welding, electrician, HVC, uh, and then culinary. Um, so as I understand, I was told we have now uh, about 70 students and mostly about construction related programs and uh, culinary also. Thank you. Um, Mr. Stewart, uh, considering you're in the construction industry, I'm sure that uh, all of you have read the article on the newspaper talking about the CNMI needing 3,000 construction workers to address the um, ongoing projects uh, throughout the entire Marianas. Um, what is your take on that? There is definitely a need for additional um, uh, craft and salary personnel, um, both CWs as well as H1s. Um, needed here in the CNMI to perform the level of construction work that's anticipated. Um, and so is my personal opinion um, based on, on looking at the timing of where things are, are, are coming. I think that um, many of the projects are, are, are in the works and going through design. And so I don't have a good grasp on exactly when the manpower is going to be needed based on when projects come out. Um, but it seems as though there is a lot of work that's, that will be coming here. Um, and the one thing I will say is, you know, when we came to work on IPI, uh, we had brought round terms, 300 and some workers from Guam over to, to help assist, um, that, that project. And those work, that workforce is not available coming from Guam any longer. So, 
any of the projects that happen here in the CNMI are really going to need to be um, handled by the CNMI, um, either through local workforce um, or, in my opinion, um, bringing CW workers in. Did I answer the question? Uh, pr okay. Pretty much. Okay. Now, um, obviously, there's a lot of projects ongoing, and, and that creates employment opportunities. So are you all tracking the unemployment data for the Commonwealth? Do you all know what is the rate right now? Okay. Data is very important, considering that 3,000 is a number out there that's been considered with respect to the construction industry. But one of the priorities, obviously, is to drive down the unemployment rate of the Commonwealth. And, and, I, and I really um, would like to see a lot of that um, happening, offering that employment opportunity for our citizens. Additionally, the apprenticeship program. Are you all working closely with the CNMI Department of Labor? Yes. I, know, I know two of you are new, and, and, and I don't blame you for, for not responding, but yes. Ms. Hall, um, can you tell us? I remember we hold meetings, we held meetings with the Department of Labor, and we are, they give us a uh, like list of uh, in, uh, questions or uh, information that, so the answer is yes. We've been working closely with them, especially because of uh, the CW funding uh, that we, uh, you know, we get from the Department of, uh, as part of the budget of NMTI. So that's why it creates uh, an opportunity for us to work with them closely with uh, Director Vicky Benevente. Has there been any occupation submitted to the U.S. Department of Labor for acceptance into the apprenticeship program? And, and um, has there been any? The, I, I would honestly say I, I haven't heard of any. From my end, I, I haven't heard of any program that's been submitted. And to date, how many employer sponsors are currently in a relationship with student placement with NMTI? I would answer that I would not know because my last communication with them on the last meeting, we were just we just talked about NMC and uh, NMTI signing a partnership. That was the last meeting that I attended when I came back, and there was no formal meeting uh, held. Okay, and um, is NCCER still being offered by NMTI? NCCR I being offered by NMTI? I would not, uh, you know. You, you don't, don't know? know. No, I don't know. That, I haven't heard of that. Okay, I'm going to jump in uh, um, in here as, as Senator Guerrero. Maybe we can kind of wrap up this. If I know there's a lot more questions, okay. and maybe this could um, we could um, have I'll an audience with uh, yeah, um, have an audience with them on a later date. But um, if we can ask one last question and um, in the interest okay. of time, okay, uh, we'll Thank ask you. my last question. And um, Miss Hall, I know you're the most senior. Um, you're a renominee. And um, I would think that you would know who would be the target population with respect to the workforce programs, correct? Yes. I want to bring you back in time during you two. Okay. When you made fun of a veteran with respect to donations to the island of Rhoda. And I do understand that maybe at that time you're not a nominee or serving on the NMTI board, but here you are today. You are a re-nominee to the board. And I wanna to bring to your attention the Veterans Act under public law 107-288, which is a US law. And the provision of this particular act codified at 38 USC 4215 establishes a priority of service requirement for covered persons, such as veterans and eligible spouses, including widows and widowers, as defined by the statute in qualified training programs. NMTI is a qualified training program. And you are a sitting nominee, a prior nominee, and now a re-nominee. I saw your actions regarding veterans, and I am a mother of a veteran. 
and I have to tell you that um, it deeply pained me that you mocked a veteran who is one of the priority target population of any workforce system and that the federal law makes them a priority for any service under any workforce system. And um, I wanted to address that today with you. May, may I reply uh, humbly, uh, Senator? I don't even remember making fun of any, so I would like to at least uh, be reminded, please, because if I said something that's offensive, it, I really apologize if it offended you or the veteran. Uh, it, it, I apologize if I did, but I'm trying to remember in my mind which which one which did I say that maybe I said something in a joke or something that offended that I didn't even know offended. So I apologize uh, humbly if if that offended anybody, then I apologize. Okay, I'm going to step in here. Thank I think you. we're kind of veering off, but um, uh, we'll just stick to general questions and um, if we can kind of wrap wrap up the uh, um, committee as a whole, please. No. Thank you. Um, Senator Younger. I'd like to, if there's no more questions, um, I'd like to now um, rise back into a plenary session, Mr. President. Oh, you have a, okay. It's not a question. So before that, no, Senator Hoko. Thank you. It's not but I just want again to reiterate my concern regarding the program, if it can be looked into for the senatorial district for Roland Tinian, and to evaluate what kind of trade program that can be instilled in both senatorial that is more visible, viable for our. Uh, are people that can avail for this kind of program to build their trade skill. So I just want to reiterate again what I ask you guys to seriously look and discuss that matter when you are, when you have the necessary quorum to discuss programs moving forward with the trade uh, NM, NM tech. And I know it's difficult for you know, the resident or the individuals from Rhode and Tinian to come here and spend so much time in order to uh, meet what is required for NTI to be able, you know, to fit in into the job category when there is available if there is no opportunity for them, you know, to be provided with the necessary skill. And that's why I ask the, I ask you when confirmed to, seriously look what kind of trade skill that Rhoda and Tinian really needed the most that can be extended so that can be part of the develop, developing you know, construction fuel or ele electricity or electrician or whatever. And I just want to reaffirm again my, my concern when I did ask you that during the public hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Hokuk. And before Okay, recognize the president. Thank you, uh, thank you, Flora. I, um, I want to thank the nominees for for accepting. Um, in top of what you guys do every day, uh, just coming from this side, I know you all in the private sector, and that's right now we're taking your time away from what you be doing. So I really I want to say thank you for for your commitment. Uh, and I and I think the 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 big ticket item right now is rebuilding our getting back, you know, our feet with with this two year hiatus or or how do you say it? Uh, we kind of shift to park <laughs> or or uh, neutral because of the pandemic, but the the business must go on, right? And I. I just wanted to to point out that um, the the critical um, how critical an MTI is as far as as the building the capacity and I appreciate the statistics or the information that you provided, Ms. Holt, uh, with regards to the the enrollees now, and uh, and I know that the the competing interest right now is we have constructions coming out uh, and then they're trying to figure out. Uh, how to best start getting them going because the cost 
is really, really, uh, it's getting there. It will be a point where even uh, simple residence, residential houses is almost uh, impossible for a uh, working couple. But nevertheless, uh, the the um, there's always going to be a need, and there's always that competing interest not too far from here in Guam. And the the only thing the the challenge right now for the CNMI is uh, is that we have the program the CW program, but at the same time we also have we want to encourage the U.S. citizens and residents to 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 step into the private sector workforce and even train them. But we cannot control their decision to up and go somewhere else where they pay better. So that's the challenge as a unit, as a unit, as a as a region here. And we understand that. So uh, I, I really, coming from this side of the aisle, uh, I really appreciate that you take your time to um, to help us grow back our, get back on our feet. Uh, in this case, uh, your representation in in the uh, the Northern Mariana Straits Institute. No? Um, we, we recognize that and I wanna thank you again. So uh, floor leader, uh, I think we've had enough discussion and I ask that we reside, we rise back into session now. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you members for your questions and concerns to the nominees. Um, I ask the nominees to um, consider these concerns and questions, add it to um, the questions that were posed um, to you last Monday and um, upon confirmation, um, lay these um, on the table for um, um, to tackle. So um, with that, Mr. President, I rise back into plenary session and yield the floor back to you. Jesus Masi, floor leader, we're back into our session. And uh, before we went into Committee of the Whole, uh, we are on item three, uh, about to vote on Standing Committee Report 2272, reporting on the committee report to uh, consider Mr. Stewart. So at this time, clerk, please call the roll. Senator Cruz? Yes. Senator De Leon Guerrero? Yes. Senator Hoko? Yes. Senator King Neighbors? Yes. Senator Manglonia? Yes. Senator Kilwa? Yes. Senator Sablan? Yes. Senator Santos? Yes. Mr. President? Again. Mr. President, all nine members voted yes. With nine members voting yes, Standing Committee Report 2272 is hereby adopted by the Senate. Confirming uh, Mr. Stewart to the Board of Trustees uh, representing the Third Senator District of Saipan at NMTI. Thank you. Um, uh, moving on to the next order or item, floor leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Our next item under reports of standing committees is standing committee report number 22-73. From your Committee on Executive Appointments and Government Investigations, reporting on the executive reappointment of Ms. Irene N. Ho to serve as a member of the Northern Marianas Technical Institute Board of Trustees representing the 3rd Senatorial District. Mr. President and members, I move for its adoption. There's a motion to adopt Standing Committee Report 2273 from Committee of EAGI, uh, reporting on Ms. Uh, Irene N. Ho. For the nomination for uh, an MTA Board of Trustees has been seconded and under discussion. The chair recognizes the, the uh, chairman for EAGI, Senator Cruz. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. This is the uh, third uh, standing committee report from your uh, committee on executive appointment and investigation. And this is the standing committee report number 22 73. The executive reappointment of Ms. Aaron N. Hall to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Marianas Technical Institute representing the Third Senator District Saipan. Mr. President, your Committee on Executive Appointments and Gun Investigation to which was referred the reappointment of Ms. Hall to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Marianas Technical Institute representing the Third Senator District Bex, leave the report as follows. After review and consideration of testimonies provided, your committee recommends the confirmation of Ms. Iron N. Hall's reappointment to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Marana's Technical Institute representing the 3rd Senatorial District. 
side pan. Pursuant to Rule 8, Section 5 of the Official Rules of the Senate, it is the duty and purpose of your committee to report to the Senate for legislative action pertaining to the reappointment of Ms. Ho to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Maranas Technical Institute, representing the Third Senatorial District, Saipan. Your committee has, has examined all pertinent documents relating to the executive Appointment of Ms. Iron and Hall's overall credentials to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Marans Technical Institute. An summation of all written and oral testimonies provided to the committee. There are four written testimonies in support of the appointee, five oral testimonies in support of the appointee, of which three hard copies of the testimony stated were submitted on the date of the hearing, and no written or oral testimonies in opposition of the appointee. Additionally, your committee stated several recommendations, issues, and concerns to the appointee that are included in this report. And based on the overassessment of Ms. Hall's credentials, experiences, testimonies, goals for the agency, and other relevant issues considered, your committee is convinced that Ms. Hall has the qualification and leadership skills necessary to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Maranas Technical Institute. The public hearing was conducted on May 23rd, 2022 at the Senate Chamber of the Honorable Sus P. Mofnas Memorial Building here in Capitol Hill, Saipan. And during the hearing, certain recommendations, issues, and concerns were raised for the appointee, accompanied by appointee Keith J. Stewart and appointee Jen, Jen Q. Tamakane to address and look into and confirm as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Runners Technical Institute. And in conclusion, all required documents in conformance with Rule 8, Section 5 of the Official Rules of the Senate have been submitted to your committee for review and consideration. And based on the submission of pertinent documents and testimonies, your committee concludes that the Appointment of Ms. Irene N. Ho to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Marans Technical Institute is in accordance with 3CMC, subsection 121.12. Therefore, your committee consents the confirmation of Ms. Irene N. Ho to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Marans Technical Institute to represent the third senior district, Saipan. Again, I ask the full body of the Senate to support Standing Committee Report Number 22-73. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Chairman Cruz. Uh, at this time, I recognize the clerk to call the roll. Senator Cruz? Yes. Senator De Leon Guerrero? No. Senator Hoko? Senator King Neighbors? Yes. Senator Malonia? No. Senator Kirigua? No. Senator Sablon? No. Senator Santos? No. Mr. President? No. Mr. President, six members voting yes and three members no. With Six members voting yes and three no. Standing committee report number 2273 is hereby adopted. Floor leader for the next standing committee report. Thank you, Mr. President. Our next standing committee report is standing committee report number 22-74. Floor leader. Sorry, I apologize. Just to reiterate, um, on the previous one, uh, six yes and three no. So the yes has it. So you are confirmed, just to clarify. Okay, floor leader. Thank you, Mr. President. We now have standing committee report number 22-74 from your committee on executive appointments and government investigations, reporting on the executive appointment of Mr. Zen Joseph Q. Tumakani to serve as a member of the Northern Maranas Technical Institute Board of Trustees representing the third senatorial district. Mr. President and members, I move for its adoption. 
Then a motion offered by the floor leader for the adoption of Standing Committee Report 2274 from EAGI Committee, uh, reporting on Mr. Zento Makani's nomination for Board of Trustees and MTI, 3rd Senatorial District of Saipan. Under discussion, the chair recognizes Senator Cruz. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. This is the fourth and last committee report from your Committee on Executive Appointment and Government Investigation. And this is the executive appointment of Mr. Zeng Q. Tamakani to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Morales Technical Institute representing the 3rd Senator District Saipan. Mr. President, your Committee on Executive Appointment and Government Investigation to which was referred the appointment of Mr. Tomakani to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Morales Technical Institute representing the 3rd Senator District begs leave to report as follows. After review and consideration of testimonies provided, your, co your committee recommends the confirmation of Mr. Tomokani's appointment to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Morales Technical Institute representing the Third Senatory District. Pursuant to Rule 8, Section 5 of the Official Rules of the Senate, it is a duty and purpose of your committee to report to the Senate for legislative action pertaining to the appointment of Mr. Tomokani to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Morales Technical Institute representing the Third Senator District. Your committee has examined all pertinent documents relating to the executive appointment of Mr. Tomokani's overall credentials to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Morales Technical Institute. And in summation of all written and all testimonies provided to the committee, there is one written testimony in support of the appointee Three oral testimonies in support of the appointee, of which two hard copy of the appointee stated were submitted on the date of the hearing. And no, or, no written oral testimonies in opposition of the appointee. Additionally, your committee stated sever several recommendations, issues, and concerns to the appointee that are included in this report. And based on the overassessment of Mr. Tomokani's credentials, experiences, testimonies, Goals for the agency and other relevant issues considered. Your committee is convinced that Mr. Tomokani has the qualification and leadership skills necessary to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Marines Technical Institute. The public hearing was conducted on May 23rd, 2022, at the Senate Chamber of the Honorable Sus P. Monfnas Memorial Building here in Capitol Hill, Saipan. And during the hearing, certain recommendations, issues, and concerns were raised for the appointee, accompanied by appointee Keith J. Stewart and appointee Aaron N. Ho, to address and look into when confirmed as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Marines Technical Institute. And in conclusion, all required documents in conformance with Rule 8, Section 5 of the Official Rules of the Senate have been submitted to your committee for review and consideration. And based on the submission of pertinent documents and testimonies, your committee concludes that the appointment of Mr. Zeng Q. Tomokani to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Marana's Technical Institute is in accordance with 3 CMC, subsection 121.12. Therefore, your committee consents the confirmation of Mr. Tomokani to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Northern Moranas Technical Institute to represent the Third Senator District Saipan. Again, I, I ask the full body of the Senate to consider and support Standing Committee Report Number 22-74. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Cruz. Uh, the Chair now recognizes the, the clerk to please call the roll for the Adoption of Standing Committee Report Number 2274. Senator Cruz? Yes. Senator Leon Guerrero? Yes. Senator Hoko? Yes. Senator King Neighbors? Yes. Senator Manglonia? Yes. Senator Kirigua? Yes. Senator Sablan? Ungan. Senator Santos? Mr. President? Ungan. Mr. President, all nine members voted yes. With nine members voting yes, standing committee report number 2274 is hereby adopted, confirming uh, 
approving the confirmation of Mr. Zentumakani to serve uh, the NMTA Board of Trustees. Congratulations. And at this time, I would like to uh, call for a short recess. Thank you.
motion and uh, the chair now like to uh, refer back to or the order of business beginning with item D. Uh, clerk. Mr. President, we have governor's message numbers 22, 188 to 22-203. Any comments from the members? Communications from the judiciary? Communications from the heads of executive department? Mr. President, we have two on our agenda. Department message number 22-38 and 22-39. Comments from the members? Communications from the House. Mr. President, we have House communication numbers 22-92 to 22-105. Comments, uh, Senator Santos, recognize. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. And this is in regards to House Communication Number 2295, a Senate Joint Resolution Number 22-15. And this is reference to um, recognizing the Community College Month for the month of April. And that is to commend um, the Northern Marianas College for the reaffirmation and accreditation for historically uh, garnering eight year uh, eight years term. And so I would like to congratulate and commend the NMC Pro Watch for making history again for um, being given the eight years accreditation. And with that recognition is extended to the accreditation reaffirmation steering committee led by the Board of Regents, the president of NMC, Dr. Galvin de Leon Guerrero, the vice president, Frank Elliptico, and his team, the NMC accreditation liaison officer, Dean Charlotte Cepeda and her team, interim dean of academic programs and services, Vilma Rages and her team, chief financial officer, Dave Attao and his team, director of the IT department, Mr. Dennis Marcello and his team and the whole NMC tribe, their hard work, dedication, and loyalty to the college, along with their teamwork, contributed greatly to the reaffirmation of the college. In spite of super uh, typhoon U2, the pandemic, and the lack of key personnel, the NMC team worked hard to ensure the college reaffirmation. And this goes to demonstrate the true meaning of the idea that accreditation surely belongs to everyone at NMC. I would also like to thank them for the growing number of students and the quality education and services that are provided to our students in Saipan, Tinian, and Rota campus, including the adult education and increased programs, the exemplary financial stewardship, which was also commended by WAP's accreditation team and the millions of dollars in grants that were awarded to our NMC college. The NMC's college is sailing ahead with a focus on learning, let us lift the tight for everyone. And with this, I hope that NMC continues to lift that tight as we have great hopes and confidence in the leadership of the NMC Pro Tribe. Thank you, Mr. President. And uh, I support the adoption of this uh, House Joint Resolution. Thank you, uh, Senator Santos. Um, any other member from the communication from the House? Uh, clerk, uh, on the manner of which the Senator, uh, Senator Santos, uh, was referring to, House Communication 22-103. Is that, uh, Senator Santos, is that, am I, in, am I correct? Um, item number 12, no? Yes, yes, okay. that is correct, Mr. Okay. President. Thank you, Senator. Just... Uh, if I read the uh, order of business, uh, it's a house resolution. It's not necessarily a house joint, so we don't need to take action on it unless uh, this thing is uh, written uh, erroneously. But nevertheless, uh, thank you for the clarification. Uh, communications from the Senate. Mr. President, we have Senate communication numbers 22-131 to 22-147. Okay, any comments from the members? Okay, uh, the chair has one uh, reference to uh, communications number, item number eight, nine, and 10. Um, I do believe that uh, they are soon uh, expiring um, a term. Therefore, I respectfully ask the chair to 
look at the calendar uh, on his calendar to to take action on the uh, needed uh, hearings of uh, on these three nominees. Thank you. Communications from Washington delegate. Unfinished business. Profiled bills, initiatives, local bills, and resolutions. This time, the chair recognizes uh, Senator Lilian Guerrero. And uh, if I may, um, Madam Senator, go right ahead and uh, uh, dispose of all your your bills and resolutions that is before an item K. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, under my pre-file bills initiatives and local bills and resolutions, uh, Senate Commemorative Resolution Number 22-02 to recognize and commend Mr. David Mangarero Sablon for his notable accomplishments, tireless service, and remarkable contributions to the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands and the people. Additionally, under Senate Resolution Number 22-21 to request a mayor of the municipality of Saipan to rename the East Coast Highway Route 36 on Saipan to Don Young Highway. Also, Mr. President and colleagues, Senate Bill Number 22-74 to prohibit individuals from providing confidential information and to prohibit fiduciaries from acting against the interests of the beneficiaries. Additionally, Senate Joint Resolution Number 2211 requesting Governor Torres and the Secretary of Finance to provide ARPA funds for a bonus for government and private employees who did not receive a bonus. And lastly, Senate Bill Number 22-76 to amend 1CMC subsection 2803C to remove the payment of land compensation judgments by the Department of Public Lands. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, um, Senator De Leon Guerrero. Um, I do note here that there's no other member, so the chair uh, would like to um, formally uh, read out uh, the legislations and uh, resolutions, starting with number three, a uh, Senate resolution number 22-22 to acknowledge and honor Marianne O'Don Pierce for her passionate and devoted contribution to her profession, our community, and the entire Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. Uh, Senate Bill number 22-75 to amend 4CMC subsection 8132 to allow the off-island member of the CUC Corp Operation or CUC Board of Directors to appear and participate in meetings via electronic means. And uh, Senate Resolution 2223 to recognize and honor Jose de la Cruz for his devoted contribution to the agricultural practices on the island of Tinian and the entire Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. And Senate Joint Resolution number 22 12 uh, to acknowledge and commemorate Cielo Gutierrez Long for her unselfish contributions to the community as a scholar and a member of the 17th and 18th Commonwealth, the Northern Mariana Islands Youth Congress. Moving on, uh, introductions of bills, initiatives, local bills and resolutions. Reports of standing committees. Uh, floor leader, I understand we have one more pending. So I recognize for the appropriate motion to entertain this bill, I mean, this uh, committee report. Thank you, Mr. President. And our last um, item under reports of standing committees is standing committee report number 22-66 <clears throat> from your committee on judiciary, government, law, and federal relations reporting on House Bill number 22-22HD1 to establish laws to regulate bioprospecting activities within the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands in order to ensure prior informed consent and equitable sharing of benefits. Mr. President and members, I move for its adoption. So in a motion <coughs> offered by the floor leader for the adoption of Standing Community Report 2266. Second. And it's been seconded. And discussion? All those in favor of the motion for adoption of Standing Community Report number 22-66, <coughs> please say aye. All those opposed say nay. Motion carries. Standing committee report number 22-66 hereby adopted. I'm moving on to item N, reports of special conference committee. Clerk. Resolution calendar. Floor leader. Thank you, Mr. President. We have several um, on our resolution calendar for action. 
And our first item is a Senate Commemorative Resolution Number 22-02, a Senate Commemorative Resolution to recognize and commend Mr. David Mangarero Sablan for his notable accomplishments, tireless service, and remarkable contributions to the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands and its people. Mr. President and members, I move for its adoption. Second. Offered by the floor leader for the adoption of Senate Resolution 22-02. To, and seconded discussion ready ready all those in favor of the motion for the adoption of senate resolution 22-2 please say aye all those opposed say nay motion carries senate resolution or commemorative resolution number 22-2 is hereby adopted floor leader Thank you, Mr. President. Our next item is Senate Resolution Number 22-22, a Senate resolution to acknowledge and honor Marianne O'Don Pierce for her passionate and devoted contributions to her profession, our community, and the entire Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. Mr. President and members, I move for its adoption. Motion offered by the floor leader for the adoption of Senate Resolution Number 22-22 has been seconded. Discussion? All those in favor for the adoption of Senate Resolution Number 2222, please say aye. All those opposed say nay. Motion carries. Senate Resolution Number 2222 is hereby adopted. Floor leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Our next item is Senate Joint Resolution Number 22-11, requesting Governor Torres and the Secretary of Finance to provide ARPA funds for a bonus for government and private employees who did not receive a bonus. Mr. President and members, I move for its adoption. Yeah. Motion offered by the floor leader for the adoption of Senate Joint Resolution Number 22-11. We've been seconded. Discussion. Recognize Senator Teresita Santos. Well, thank you, Mr. President, and uh, <clears throat> I support the adoption of uh, this Senate Joint Resolution 22-11, as I have witnessed um, during and throughout the pandemic, where private sector employees continue to show up for work despite putting their health and safety on the line in order to provide the necessary or essential services to our communities. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Santos. All those uh, in favor for the adoption of Senate Joint Resolution 2211, please say aye. All those opposed say nay. Motion carries. Senate Joint Resolution 2211 is hereby adopted. Item number four, uh, floor leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Our next item is Senate Resolution number 22-23, a Senate resolution to recognize and honor Jose de la Cruz for his devoted contributions to agricultural practices on the island of Tinian and the entire Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. Mr. President and members, I move for its adoption. Then a motion offered by the floor leader for the adoption of Senate Resolution 22-23. <clears throat> And has been seconded. Discussion? Ready? All those in favor for the adoption of Senate Resolution Number 2223, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. Motion carries. Senate Resolution Number 2223 is hereby adopted. And floor leader, I recognize you. Thank you, Mr. President. And our last resolution for action is Senate Joint Resolution Number 22-12 to acknowledge and commemorate Cielo Gutierrez Long for her unselfish contributions to the community as a scholar and a member of the 17th and 18th Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands Youth Congress. Mr. President and members, I move for its adoption. Offered Second. by Ms. Floor Leader for the adoption of Senate Joint Resolution Number 22-12. has been seconded. Discussion? Ready? All those in favor for the adoption of Senate Joint Resolution 2212, please say aye. All those opposed say nay. Motion carries. Senate Joint Resolution number 22-12 hereby adopted. Uh, Senator Santos. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. And this is going back again to House Communication 22-94. This is transmitting for Senate action. How, House Senate, Joint Senator, Senator Santos, may I... May, uh, Ask uh, which 
Okay. Which uh, uh, item? It's, are you asking that we go back to uh, Yes, House of Communication number 22-94. This is the House Joint Resolution number 22-15, just meeting for Senate action. And so if there's no objection by the members, if we can also um, move this to resolution calendar for our adoption in today's uh, uh, session. Uh, no, can you. I, let me call for a short recess, please. We are back into our uh, plenary session, and without any objection from the members, the chair would like to go back to item G, specifically uh, entertaining uh, uh, the request of Senator Santos on House Communication 2294. And at this time, the chair recognized the floor leader. Thank you, Mr. President. And in reference to 
Um, House communication number 22-94. Um, if there's no objection, I'd like to request that we move um, this communication to the resolution calendar for action by this body. So uh, offered by uh, the floor leader. Uh, it's been seconded. All those in favor for the placement of House Communication 2294 on today's uh, resolution calendar, please say aye. All those opposed, say nay. Motion carries. The House Communication number 2294 is properly placed on view calendar. So with that, moving on back to item O on the view calendar and recognize once again the floor leader for the appropriate motion for the adoption of the House Joint Resolution. Thank you, Mr. President. And under item O, resolution calendar, we have one more resolution for action, and this is House Joint Resolution number 22-15 to recognize Community College Month in the month of April and to commend the Northern Marianas College for the reaffirmation of its accreditation for a historic eight-year term and its contributions to the workforce development needs of the Commonwealth. Mr. President and members, I move for its adoption. There's been a motion offered by the floor leader for adoption of the adoption of South Jordan Resolution 2215. It's been seconded. Discussion? Ready? All those in favor for the adoption of House Joint Resolution number 22-15, please say aye. All those opposed say nay. Motion carries. House Joint Resolution number 2215 is hereby adopted. And with that, under... Moving on to bill calendar, and at this time, the chair recognizes the floor leader to offer a motion for passage of House Bill number 22-22. Thank you, Mr. President. We have one bill on today's bill calendar, and this is House Bill number 22-22, referencing... Standing Committee Report 22-66, to establish laws to regulate bioprospecting activities within the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands in order to ensure prior informed consent and equitable sharing of benefits. Mr. President and members, I move for its passage in the form of SD1. This has been a motion offered by a motion offered by the floor leader for the passage of House Bill 22-22. It's been seconded. Discussion? Discussion? Ready? Clerk, clerk, please call the roll. Senator Cruz? Yes. Senator De Leon Guerrero? Yes. Senator Hoko? Yes. Senator King Neighbors? Yes. Senator Manglonia? Yes. Senator Kirigua? Senator Sablon? Hungan. Senator Santos? Yes. Mr. President? Hungan. Mr. President, all nine members voting yes. With nine members voting yes, House Bill number 22-22 hereby passes the Senate in a form of Senate Draft 1. Thank you. And uh, before we move on, I wish to uh, request uh, the clerk to just leave Senate Bill 22-51 on, on calendar. Um I do know that this is a very uh, critical legislation of which the speaker and I have made uh, an understanding that either the House bill or the Senate bill, uh, we need to further discuss this uh, legislation simply because of the gravity of the importance of, of what it uh, entails, the intent. So I... Uh, Appreciate the members' uh, uh, understanding on this matter, and uh, <clears throat> we shall await the actions of the House bill. And I also wanted to thank uh, Senator Idis de Longuero for yielding to the House bill, the Speaker's bill, to basically uh, aiming to uh, um, for the same purpose. But that being said, uh, we don't have anything uh, else on the bill calendar, and I. Now go over to uh, item Q. Petitions, memorials, and miscellaneous communications, clerk. Mr. President, we have miscellaneous communication numbers 22-96 to 22-105. Any 
Comments from the members? Senator Santos, recognize. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. This is uh, in reference to miscellaneous communication 22-100. I would just like to extend gratitude to our public auditor for her service to the Commonwealth. And uh, we, I wish her the best um, in, um, in her future and her family. Thank you. This is Senator Santos. We're moving on. Item R, announcements. Um, Senator Yudong Rao. A privilege, Mr. President. Um, if I may respectfully ask um, for action, perhaps maybe on the next session to place Senate Bill number 22-23 and Senate Joint Resolution 2201 for our action. I know we have sent numerous communications to um, um, this body, so... I respectfully ask again the members to review the uh, Senate bill and the Senate joint resolution. It's been a while. And in looking at our rule seven, section eight C of our Senate rules, it talks about a committee shall report to the Senate all actions taken on any matter referred to it. The report is due within 60 days from the referral date for bills and within 90 days from the referral date for legislative initiatives and referenda. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Senator Leong Guerrero, uh, committee chair. Uh, please take note of that. What, what are the num uh, numbers again? Um, floor. It's uh, Senate Bill 2223 and SJR 2201. Okay. Okay, with that, Floor, uh, the motion to adjourn. Thank you, Mr. President. And at this time, I'd like to offer a motion that we adjourn today's Senate session subject to the call of the President. Motion to adjourn this Senate session has been offered. Do I hear a second? Yeah. Second. All those in favor of the motion to adjourn this session, please say aye. All those opposed say nay. Motion carries. Senate session stands adjourned. Thank you, members, for participating today. Thank you. <laughs>